An American in Paris, a new musical inspired by the classic movie, begins performances at the Palace Theatre March 13th, following a highly anticipated and highly successful world premiere in Paris at the Chatelet Theatre. I'm delighted to have with me today Christopher Wielden, director and choreographer of the show, as well as Robert Fairchild and Leanne Cope, who play Jerry and Lee's in the show. Welcome, or as the French would say, bienvenue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so An American in Paris, the movie, arguably one of the greatest, most loved mu movie musicals of all time, perfect property to turn into a musical. How did you go about translating the film into something for the stage, for the Broadway stage? Well, um, of course, we were hugely inspired by, by the movie, um, but I think we were also excited uh, about uh, the possibility of um, making a, um, a version that uh, is, is for today and draws its inspiration, but doesn't actually really recreate the movie on stage. So there, there's much of the, of the beloved Gershwin music from the movie in our version. And, um, and we have, we've based our, our new book on, um, on the characters from the movie, but it, it's, it's very much a, a new musical. Oh, that's exciting. What was it like to rehearse and perform and have the world premiere in Paris? I mean, a musical about Paris in Paris it doesn't get much more exciting than that, I would think. It was incredible to be an American in Paris. <laughs> performing in American in Paris. And two Brits. Yes, and two Brits. <laughs> <laughs> it just felt like you were doing research every day when you were walking down the street. And our, our scene down by the Seine, um, our dressing rooms overlooked the Seine. And on your breaks, to just to take a walk and picture where you would be and, and go out on stage that night and have a 3D picture of where you are. And it's so fresh in your mind, was so helpful and so great. It was a great inspiration for me playing a French woman being in Paris, because I spent a lot of time just watching how the French women are. They're very chic. They've got a natural inner confidence to them. So it was good for me to, to live that and see how French women actually live their lives. Do you all speak French? I understand that from following the show on Twitter. Everybody follow the show on Twitter. <laughs> uh, that some of the crew only spoke French. So what was that experience like being, you know, working on a production and not everybody speaks the same language except the language of theater? Well, it was it was definitely challenging at the beginning um, because, you know, the, the tech process for, for a big Broadway show is, is complex and um, a, a lot of sort of going back and changing scenes and but um, there was a wonderful, by the end of it, a wonderful feeling of family at the Châtelet. And I think everyone was incredibly proud of uh, taking a little part of the ownership of this show. And uh, one of the greatest experiences was the final performance when all of the crew and all of the dressers and the makeup artists all came out on stage with us to take a bow. And they brought the house lights up um, in the auditorium and the audience were waving at us and we were waving goodbye to them. It was really, it was a really beautiful experience. So this is your... Broadway musical directing debut, and everyone knows that you've directed and choreographed ballets. What is the difference between directing a full-scale musical versus a full-scale ballet, working with actors versus dancers? Well, obviously, it's a sort of slightly different language working with, with actors and, and, um, and, um, and working with a book and bringing book scenes to life. Um, but in the end, you know, I, I tell stories through movement at the ballet, and um, it's really just about communicating a story clearly and uh, that has an emotional resonance. Um, so I guess I kind of fumbled my way through it at the beginning, but, um, but found my feet and uh, uh, it's been the most marvelous opportunity for me to, I suppose, stretch my, my um, artistic uh, uh, wings in a, in a different way. And I know that from looking at the cast bios on the website and basically being obsessed with this musical, I have to confess, <laughs> and can't wait for it to happen, um, that you obviously have a lot of dancers with very strong ballet trainings, but there's also a nice mix of pe everybody needs to be able to do ballet, jazz, tap. Um, is there a mix of choreographic styles in the show, um, would you say? Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got, uh, we've got, obviously, we've got ballet, yeah. some more Broadway uh, style uh, dancing, um, tap dancing. Uh, these guys have to pretty much do it all. <laughs> well, um, this is also both of your Broadway debuts, yeah. Miss Pa. And obviously, you have this impeccable, fabulous ballet training. What did you do to prepare for the demands of being in a Broadway musical as performers? Mm. Well, I always wanted to be on Broadway, and 
somehow I ended up in a ballet company. I got inspired <laughs> by the ballet when I saw it actually on Live from Lincoln Center. Um, and my sister, who was performing in it, um, is in the company. And I really got inspired to be a ballet dancer then. But to get to do this kind of work feels like coming home because that's how I grew up. I grew up tap, jazz, and wanted to be a song and dance man. So getting this opportunity is a dream. Here's your chance. Yeah. <laughs> I've always also loved musicals, but I chose to go on the ballet route from 11 years old, but always had that kind of niggling feeling that it was something I wanted to do. And it's amazing that now I have this opportunity and that it's not in the West End, it's on Broadway. And I, I can't, I, I'm still kind of pinching myself. I can't believe I'm here. So Robbie, you mentioned your sister, Megan Fairchild, an amazing ballet dancer in her own right. Um, because she, like you, she is making her Broadway debut. She has, in fact, already made her Broadway debut in the fabulous musical On the Town. So has she given you any advice or survival tips? No, she's having the time of her life. <laughs> you know, she's just like, you're going you're gonna to just enjoy every second of it. And it's been really cool to see her um, in a completely different light um, and a diff completely different avenue of dancing. So it's been really fun for me to get to watch her. Yeah, yeah. Proud parents somewhere, exactly. somewhere out there. <laughs> uh, and Leanne, I know that you recently met Leslie Caron and you're I now did. BFFs. Um, what was that? <laughs> did she come see the show? Is, is that how you met her? And what she was... didn't come to Paris because I think she was, it was over the Christmas period, so she wanted to spend time with her family. But um, I bumped into her at the Royal Opera House in London because she was coming to watch one of um, Alice in Wonderland, one of Chris's mm -hmm. ballets there. And I literally bumped into her at stage door. And I saw her and I was like, oh, are you Leslie Caron? And she said, yes, are you Leanne? And it was, it was very, very strange. And um, she was said that she was hoping to see me in the performance that night. And I was like, well, no, I've taken a year off to do <laughs> American in Paris. And then I met her for tea. And she was just the most remarkable woman. Um, she told me how to look after myself. You know, doing eight shows a week is going to be right. hard and to sleep lots and eat lots of vegetables. <laughs> she just gave me some wonderful advice and told me how lovely Jean Kelly was and how the whole experience really shaped her life, moving from Paris to Hollywood. And um, yeah, she was just a, a lovely, lovely lady. And you're like a little mini version of her. Like she probably felt like she was looking in the mirror because we were just it talking about that It was very strange. My mom, time. when she saw the photo of the two of us, said, my goodness, you do look so alike. We have very similar eye colors. And obviously, she's French and I'm English. So there's a difference there. But um, yeah, she's a lovely, lovely lady. Well, I'm glad you got the opportunity to meet her <laughs> and vice versa. Why is it important for us to have the arts on TV, to turn on the TV and see dance, opera, theater, musical theater? Um, and why is it important to support public television? Well, for me, you know, I came to New York 20 years ago and, um, and uh, public te television was, was always the way that I would see um, what else was going on, um, you, you know, in the arts in, in America and um, through the life from Lincoln Center shows, getting the chance to see um, great ballet performances. And of course, for us, it's really important to get, you know, ballet onto television and in, into the living rooms of people that can't always necessarily um, come into the city, buy a ticket, or who haven't seen ballet before and just happen to be flipping through and are looking for Top Chef and suddenly they land on a ballet right. and <laughs> and um, and it, it piques their, their interest and their excitement and then they come in and, and they support our art form by coming to a live performance. So um, so it's hugely important to, uh, to support public television. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for visiting us today, or as thank the French you. would say, merci beaucoup. Merci. And we will see you and everyone else at the Palace Theatre. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you.